Hey Algebra 1, we've been talking about systems of equations and inequalities and so today we're kind of working within those ideas to try to solve some word problems. Let's jump into it. <clears throat> Antonio wants to describe to a service that allows him to rent DVDs and stream movies online. Movie Madness, the first option, offers a subscription that's $14.25 per month and with that uh, subscription he can rent DVDs for $1.40 each time. So it sounds like he has to pay a little bit and pay for the rental. And so the first thing I wanted to build was the $1.40 per movie, plus starting at $14.25. The second one says that he pays $8.50 a month, a little cheaper, but he does have to pay $3.25 per movie if he's streaming, and that creates the other inequality. So I want you to analyze these two statements. Uh, I want you to think about when, uh, which method is better, and the answer is it depends. The subscription that is best for you really depends on how many movies you rent each month. So I want you to think about uh, solving these for their <coughs> point of intersection. And once you find their point of intersection, you know at what number of movies does it not matter. Maybe it's 10 movies that makes them equal. <clears throat> Doesn't matter which subscription you pay for at 10 movies, they're the same price possibly. I don't know if it's 10, you'll have to solve it. But um, <clears throat> that means after that number of movies, it is cheaper for one plan than the other. So that's why I want you to write a short paragraph recommending one, and it should be based on that point of intersection. So give that a shot. Uh, number two. Uh, it says that there is a, a company that wants to rent a place for the Nutcracker. Uh, that is a, co a popular ballet, Christmas Tom. It says their seating capacities range from 800 to 1800, and the management knows that the ticket sales may not be very good. Normally, they sell between 65 and 90 percent of the tickets. So, which ever arena they choose, they want a hundred seats to be set aside for the company's donors, the people that made it happen. They want to give them maybe uh, better seats or free seats or something like that. So the first thing I did was define my variables. X represents the number of seats, like the capacity of the arena, but Y represents how many you are selling. So the idea here is that you want between 800 and 1876, but that includes 100 for the donor. So if we were to subtract 100 out of the middle, that brings us down to 700 and 1776. So this is the range of possible seats that are needed for the arena. Now this other statement over here, this is more about the idea of the 65% to 90%. So the seats sold, that should be calculated based on 65% of X or 90% of X. X represents how many seats the arena has. So basically we want the uh, Y value to be between 65% and 90% of the total capacity. So I went ahead and uh, thought about this graphically. So we want between 700 and 1776 in terms of X. X has got to be between those. So that begins my shading. And then to graph 0.90X and 0.65X, that gives us two lines. And you want them between that because you want it. To, you know that it's going to sell between 65% and 90%. And so any point in here is a solution to the problem. So now it says if the company, uh, sorry, one of the arenas that they're considering has 1,200 seats. Determine the minimum and maximum number of seats they would need to sell in order for management to reach their goal. So if we said, well, if you had 1,200 available seats, let's take uh, 1,200. On the calculator load, 1,200. And let's multiply that by 0.65. So it looks like 780 on the bottom end. And if I multiply uh, 1,200 times 0.9, that gives us 1080. So any between, uh, they need to sell between those two values in order for uh, management to reach their goal. So it says, well, let's say they sold 900 seats. What is the range of the seating capacities for the arenas that they must have rented? So if you know they sold 900 tickets, we need to basically reverse solve that a little bit and say, okay, well, 65% uh, of what is 900? So let's take 900 and divide by 0.65, and that would give us 1384. That would be uh, on the upper end. And if we said 900 divided by 0 0.9, <clears throat> 0 
done, well, that gives us a thousand on the lower end. So we're dividing by those decimals to kind of figure out what the potential uh, maximum capacities are. So that's between a thousand and 1384. The last part says if they rented it for 1300 and they sold 800 tickets, would they reach their goal? Well, the question is, is 800 out of 1300, if you divide those values, is that between 65 or 90%? And the answer is no. Uh, 800 out of 1300 is only 61.5%, so that would not be enough for them to reach their goal. So part B is no. All right, so uh, I think I'm going to take the stretch off because I'm afraid the video would be too long if I was trying to explain that problem. If you did read that problem, I did go ahead and set up your inequalities for you. Uh, we're talking 15 per dozen for cupcakes, 13 per dozen, sorry, 15 per dozen for the cookies, uh, 13 per dozen for the cupcakes, and you're trying to make at least $300. That's my first statement. And then the second one is a little harder. That's why it's a stretch. It takes an hour for you to decorate the cookies. And so there's like a 1x in front of this. And then this other number, this 1 third, that's the idea of 20 minutes in terms of an hour. 20 minutes out of 60 minutes is a third. So that's a third of an hour. And they want no more than uh, 20 hours per week. So uh, the next part kind of talks about, well, what if you know, you had 40 as a maximum and 12 as a maximum? What would that be in terms of your inequalities? Well, that's just an inequality statement based on that one variable. So when it says you can make a maximum of 40 dozen cupcakes, cupcakes was the idea of y, so y better be less than or equal to 40. And for the 12 dozen cookies, those are more of the x value, so x better be less than or equal to 12. So I did kind of start an attempt to um, show that, but it just kind of got really hairy and nasty, and these last two are going to take longer to explain. So um, if you get that much, if you can set up the inequalities, that would be great. Don't worry about three and four for now. Let's go to numbers uh, one uh, through five for the review here. Um, so the first thing says consider the equation 6x minus 2y equals negative 12. What is the slope? So the first thing I do is I start moving x to the other side. I divide by negative 2. And now you can answer the question because we now know what the m value is. So you can go ahead and tell me what is the slope based on the work that I've shown you. And then what are the x and y intercepts? So when we're talking about x and y intercepts, I've shown in class how you can plug the opposite letter in as zero. For example, if I want to find the x intercept, let's just make the y zero. And what you see on the far right is me just dealing with 6x equals negative 12. Same thing if I want to find the x intercept or the y intercept, I will pretend like there's no x, plug in zero for that. And so I want you to use these two equations in green to solve for the two values that would be the x and y intercepts for the graph. We also have uh, been reviewing solving literal equations. So I took the uh, area of a trapezoid formula, uh, 1 half a plus b times h, and the first thing I did is multiply 2 to the other side. And then I am trying to get a by itself, so I'm going to divide h to the other side. So see if you can finish that problem out. There's one more step to try to solve for a. Number three, I did uh, the first one, and I want you to do the second one by yourself. So I start by saying y-intercept of negative three, and then we're going up five over one a few times. We need a solid line because of the or equal line there. And then I'm supposed to shade greater than that line. So I didn't shade. I want you to shade, and so I can check your shading tomorrow in class. The second line, I wanted to make a dashed line because it's simply less than. But very similarly, I start at 5. 5 is my y-intercept. And then I'm going down 3 over 1 to get my next few points. And so now it says I'm supposed to graph less than that. So go ahead and shade. Where is the overlapping region? Is it region 1, 2, 3, or 4? Try B on your own. Uh, if you are solving for Y here, watch out for that negative. You're going to end up dividing by negative 1, and that will cause your inequality to change directions. We'll check that out here in just a minute, or tomorrow in class, rather. Make sure you do identify two points that are solutions to the system in A and B. 
What is the equation for the line that has a slope of zero and passes through the point 37? First of all, I started with the idea that we want slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, except we know the slope value is zero. Well, that makes this a little simpler because that means this ends up being zero, so y equals b. Well, what is the y value in the point? Looks like y is the value seven. So if you had y equals seven as an equation, that would be a horizontal line. Let's just check it out. If I put in y equals seven here, and let's do zoom six for just a standard graph. What you'll notice is I have a horizontal slope, which is zero, and now it has the point 37 on it. So that is the answer. So I did get the second one going for you. Uh, I started with the same process, y equals mx plus b. I plugged in the one fifth, and now because you know the zero in the first one really wiped a lot of stuff out, that won't happen as much here. So I'm plugged in the x value, negative 2 thirds in for the x, and then 1 half, went ahead and plugged 1 half in for the y value. But there is some work to be done here. We've got to put these together and solve for b. So that is the last part for you to be able to complete the equation. y equals 1 fifth x plus what? Or 1 fifth x minus what number? So that is uh, the uh, last part you need to do to tell me that equation. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I will see you tomorrow in class. See ya.